Hey guys, so we haven't made a video in a while, so I figured it would only be fitting to do a video on uh, fat tail breeding season and fat tail breeding and incubation, everything that goes on into it. Um, so, what we're going to show you today is kind of some of the methods that we use to do it. The typical season for a fat tail starts at the end of October, beginning of November in the, uh, the fall, and will run anywhere, you know, into the, the March, February. Sometimes you get some stragglers that end up in spring, sometimes in summer, but for the most part, once one starts ovulating, it's a waterfall effect in your room and they all start going. Uh, a little bit different than leopard geckos. You can generally get them when they're up to size and maturity to ovulate by a lot of different tricks. These guys, you get a certain window during the year, which is generally in fall. Uh, but not to say that it's impossible, it won't happen any other time of the year. The way we do it here is, um, these are our groups, and uh, come on over here, follow us. The groups are in different projects. We like to keep the fat tails on a vermiculite substrate uh, mixed with a cocoa bark mix. The heat's in the back. They get multiple hides. Uh, some of these do look a little small. They are in laying, laying season right now. So what you have to get good at is follicle grading. And this, I don't know if you can see that in the lower right. It's going to be tough to pick up on camera, but that's an egg. Um, generally what we're doing at uh, starting the beginning of October is follicle grading all our females, checking them to see if they're starting to ovulate and uh, picking out who they're going to go with, uh, what's going to be a good match genetically and uh, what we need here at the facility for next year and of course what's going to be supply and demand for the market. Um, we do two different kinds of breedings. One's called a harem breeding. Uh, for instance, our AML group, we have a group of AML females. Uh, we breed them to a striped AML male. We know what the outcome is at every time. Um, so the male goes in here and he's in there for a certain period of time. He gets rotated out. We have a few AML groups. Um, so we know <clears throat> what, what the outcome is. So it's not as specific. Um, we have other groups such as uh, a whiteout caramel, uh, which we have het caramels. We have real caramels. Obviously the big difference between there is you're going to get whiteouts that are 100% het caramel versus just pos hats. So uh, that's a big difference in what you're getting, so you want to be a little bit more specific and keep better records on that. For those uh, specific breeds, uh, we don't put the male in there. We introduce one female every night to the male. Uh, we find out that doing it this way uh, lets the male be more productive and also not lose as much weight, which brings me to the, the next big topic is males uh, seem to be always the problem childs with fat tail breeding. Um, a, sometimes they don't want to breed if they either cooled correctly or caught them on a bad day, whatever. Uh, they're a little bit more touchy. It's almost never the females, almost always the males uh, with fat tails, which is kind of the opposite of leopards. It's never, never the males, sometimes the females. <coughs> so um, we find that keeping them by themselves, feeding them good every day, monitoring their weight that way. Um, gets a lot better production out of our singly housed groups and we also do watch the males in the harem breeding style a lot closer too because fat tail males have the tendency to go off food uh, they'll go off food for a long time they'll really go down and look like crap uh, and then all of a sudden a light bulb goes on that says I'm done breeding and then it's time to start eating um, there's different D different ways you could feed your your males and females during the season some people use pinkies um, I don't, I don't see the need for it. Um, we feed uh, heavily supplemented crickets, uh, calcium without D3, with the uh, once a week with D3. Uh, we feed them every day. Our females get fed every day and so do our males. Um, they eat what they want to eat for that day and then that's it. Sometimes it's uh, quite, a, quite a amount depending on how many females you have in here. Um, so I don't give pinkies. I don't see the need to make a gecko, uh, you know, obese and yeah, it probably helps them, but I just, I think the crickets are a much better staple for them. Or if you can get them on mealworms, that's also a really good staple. We don't use them here. We just have too many fat tails to turn over and, and too many uh, sticklers that just don't want to, don't want to turn to it. So what we're also going to show you is what happens. So, so your male breeds with your female. And uh, we actually have a clutch here we're going to show you. We're testing out uh, hatch right right now, which is why you see us using uh, Paralyte, which we really don't use that much, but we're going to give it a shot. So we've already found an egg here. We've dug up and uh, went through very carefully. I like to use Sharpies, put a little mark on the top, just like so. 
so I can tell what top is up and doesn't get spun. We already got a couple clutches in here. This is a white out caramel clutch, so it's going to go into our, you know, this is one female. She already laid a clutch prior and I already put an egg away. <clears throat> so her clutch goes in here, one container. It's marked with the date and the genetics. And then we're going to go ahead and this specific uh, clutch I want to put into the male incubator because I'd like to hatch out some white out caramel males. Um, they are temperature sex dependent. Uh, generally you're going to get males out of fat tail eggs at about 88, 89, I suggest 88, um, and females 82, 83. Um, it is a little bit tougher to produce males with fat tails than it is leopards. So the problem is if you go too high you're going to get a lot of uh, mortality. So you're just safer to go at 88. Uh, you're not going to get as many males as you, you'd like. It's not going to be 100% males out of this incubator, but you know what, you're going to get a much better hatch rate. So that's uh, one little tip I like to use. And a uh, little bit lower, but you're still going to get males. It'll help you out. Um, so we do use vermiculite too. We're trying out the hatch right. Uh, we're just starting out here with the season. We probably got, geez, probably more than 50% of the females just started ovulating or, or even haven't started yet. Some cool projects to look forward to uh, from us this year are Ghost Patternless, Caramel Patternless, um, working on White Up Caramel Patternless, uh, Olive Project, the Giant Project, uh, of course White Out Caramels, uh, Ghost Amels, oh man, a lot of different stuff. So when the, there's going to be a real exciting year for, the, uh, for this season, like I said, we just started. So. Um, if you have any questions or comments or, or what we like to use, I'm a big fan of, uh, of RepCal. I've been using this for 10 years and I've never had an issue. I love it. We use RepCal without D3. That's the green label for every feeding. And we use the pink label that's with D3 <clears throat> about once a week. And uh, the baby care is a little bit different too. I guess I could get into that. Uh, what you want to do is you want to mist them down fairly frequently a little bit. You want to make sure that we keep them. Here, I'll actually show you. We keep these, um, our babies, on a damp paper towel with a hide. You get these simply at a, any butcher. It's a styrofoam um, meat tray. This guy, believe it or not, it's only two weeks old. It's a huge hatchling. It's from our giant project we're watching. Just fed him. And we keep it really simple, but we keep it nice and moist so they don't get dehydrated. They seem to do a lot better that way. They get fed every day, also supplemented every day. Um, and if you just keep up with that regimen, you're all right. Also, what we like to do with the, um, since we do keep the vermiculite and uh, eco or substrate in here, about once a week we go through and uh, moisten the, only the back half of these uh, containers front half stays dry, the back half stays um, wet. You'll also notice we also keep containers in these uh, that are damp vermiculite and peat moss also, I'm sorry, eco-earth. Reason being is they can lay outside the hides, they can lay inside the hides, it doesn't matter. Um, it gives the females a lot more options if somebody's being more dominant. Uh, you can house, uh, house about four maximum in one of these. It's a V35 Vision, about 32 quarts, give or take. Um, so, try and think. I hope I covered everything for you about breeding. Um, there are more tips and tricks and tons of different things that you could do to get these guys to be successful. And by no means what we went over today is uh, the end all to breeding. It's just what I find to be successful. There's many different ways. Um, my best tip to anybody starting out with fat tails is, is uh, don't get frustrated with them. You know, stay with it. There is uh, a lot of cool combos. The market is just uh, exploding with new stuff. Uh, a lot of new hobbyists enjoy this. They are a little bit diff more difficult than leopard geckos, but once you get the hang, about, hang of it, it's extremely fun. So on that note, stay tuned for our Australian uh, video coming up soon. We wish you all a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year if we don't get to make a video by then. And uh, once again, we appreciate you guys watching. We appreciate making 2010 a successful year for us. Take care, guys.